folks, in case you missed the announcement, apparently there's a Marvel vs. Capcom re-release. And it's not just Marvel vs. Capcom 2, the game that we've been begging for them to re-release for years that hasn't been purchasable in any form for a really long time due to licensing issues. Well, it's coming back along with a bunch of other games. I've seen the announcement, obviously, but I have not yet watched the trailer. So I don't know really what's in store. So how about we take a look? see if they've got anything to show here I, this is honestly so unexpected i really really did not think this is going to happen the legendary crossover hits our back journey across time with marvel and capcom heroes okay marvel versus capcom fighting collection arcade classics okay we got children of the atom this was the first one um the graphics were really impressive for the time i think this was like 93 uh but the feel of the game is a little weird to go back to marvel superheroes so again, this did not have Capcom characters. It was not a crossover. Oh yeah, and this was War of the Gems. You pick up gems as you fight. Then X-Men versus Street Fighter. This one is still very fondly remembered. A game with like a million infinites, but super fast and fun. And this introduced a lot of uh, the gameplay that would come back in Marvel versus Capcom. Marvel Super Heroes versus Street Fighter. You know, this one, I've never really played. This one was not that popular. I feel like... X-Men just remained more popular for whatever reason. This is Marvel vs. Capcom 1. Uh, you know, kind of a small roster, but obviously a, a really cool game. And introduced the assist system. And then Marvel 2. The game that perfected the assists, increased the team size to 3. This is the one that everyone still remembers. Bro. And the beat-em-up classic. The Punisher? <laughs> Wait, I actually didn't know about Wait, huh? <laughs> okay, so what is that? Like five fighting games and one beat em up. <laughs> Listen, I mean, that's cool, I guess, but I'm here for Marvel vs. Capcom. Oh my god. Okay, includes original songs from the arcade releases. Okay, so there's like a, like a sound test, a gallery. We got the Bengus art. Bro, that rogue art was sick, man. Okay, training mode. Let's go. Yeah, training mode in Marvel 2 has been kind of an issue, you know? We've had only, like, the Dreamcast training mode. One button specials? Okay, I won't be using that. Okay, save and look. So, like, save states? That's cool, I guess. Lost the fight, easily load your save and try again. Okay. Original marquee cards. Okay, that's pretty cool. I, I'm very nostalgic for these. I remember seeing these. Rollback netcode? Okay, thank you. Casual matches for laid-back battles. Okay. And I assume it's going to be ranked, right? Lobby matches with friends. Okay. I would hope so. Shinku Nightmare. Test your strength against players from all over the world. So yeah, this is ranked. They got the league points. This all looks pretty much identical to the Capcom Fighting Collection that had like all the Darkstalkers games. Need a change of pace? Try some other modes too. Okay. Bro. And we got the new the new splash arts, Cyclops and Ryu. Shaking hands once again. Alright, and it's coming to multiple platforms. Looks like no Xbox. PS4, Switch, and Steam 2024. Bro. That is so sick. So yeah, if you guys don't recall, there was this Capcom Fighting Collection, which was kind of interesting because it was like a weird set of games, right? It, we had like obviously Vampire Savior and some of the other Darkstalkers games. People really liked those. We also had Warzord, which like no one remembers. We had only one version of Street Fighter 2 and it was Hyper Street Fighter 2, which was the, the one that lets you pick all the different versions of the character. Pocket Fighter and Puzzle Fighter, those are cool. And Cyberbot. So this was like a really eclectic mix. Uh, but, you know, overall, I think it was a pretty decent collection. Like, unlike 30th Anniversary Collection, Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection had a lot of issues with the online. This, uh, you know, from what I played, the online seemed pretty solid. And another nice feature that this collection had was you could, like, select as many games as you wanted, like, and queue up for all of them and see if you can find an opponent. It'll just, like, whoever the first opponent it can find is, it'll match you up. So if you only want to play one game, you can just pick that if you want to like play any game you can do that so i'm sure that uh this one will be the same and i'm sure it's gonna have pretty similar training mode obviously you can see uh we have hitbox display in the training mode no frame data display 
which was a little bit disappointing. And yeah, this had uh, record and playback as well, which was pretty nice because, you know, a lot of times when you're playing on emulator or playing on like the old versions like Marvel 2 on Dreamcast, yeah, you're not going to have access to these features. So that's handy as well. So I'm sure a lot of that is going to be similar. I feel like the big things that held this collection back, um, one was no crossplay. So uh, it seems like most people bought this on PC, uh, but the issue there is that it has to compete with emulation, which is like really, really good now with stuff like Fightcade. Uh, you know, we can play with really amazing online. Uh, usually the experience is actually smoother, like in terms of load times and stuff. So yeah, I'm sure there's probably not going to be crossplay in the Marvel one. They probably would have mentioned it if there was going to be, which is definitely really unfortunate. Um, but, uh, in terms of like emulation being better, that's actually one of the big problems that's plagued Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is it's a rather difficult game to emulate. So yeah, like because this was a Dreamcast slash Naomi game, as opposed to the older games, which were like on the Capcom CPS hardware, uh, it was definitely a little bit harder to emulate. There were always like some little bugs with it. And also the online, even though we did end up getting rollback for this game, um, through Flycast. Uh, the online is definitely not amazing. It is very, very noticeably, uh, there are issues with input delay and just things really, really not feeling right compared to what we were used to on the real hardware. So uh, I'm hoping, you know, obviously this collection, it is gonna be emulated. Like that's how it works. These are, these are emulators at the end of the day, I assume. Actually, that, that's a good question. I never thought about that because this game was ported to PS3 and 360. So maybe they're gonna like bring that port over. So I went to the official website and uh, interestingly, they actually have like the ROM version for all the games listed. And for Marvel 2, uh, it says this, which I think is just like the standard arcade version. So I have to imagine that this is gonna be emulated and not like you know, a port of the PS3 port, like running natively, because uh, yeah, then it would be like its own game. It wouldn't be like a ROM version. So I'm guessing that's how it's gonna work. I'm just gonna look through this site and see if there's any other juicy info on here. Changes from the original, they only have one. Apparently there's like a uh, screen flashing reduction for uh, those of us who are photosensitive. That seems to be the only change for Marvel 2. X-Men Children of the Atom, same thing, plus Juggernaut and Magneto are now available through the hidden character setting, okay. Marvel superheroes, Doom, Thanos, and Anita are now playable. <laughs> this is Anita, who's this? <laughs> I guess these secret characters, they were in the original game, but you would have to like put in a code on character select. Now you can just have them selectable. Okay, so that's a little easier. X-Men versus Street Fighter, no changes, just the screen flashing. Marvel Superheroes versus Street Fighter, uh, Cyber Akuma, now playable. He wasn't even playable originally, right? W was he boss only? Oh, I looked it up. He was playable in the console version only. So uh, yeah, they're making him playable here on the arcade version. Obviously, Marvel 2 it was just the photo sensitivity thing and now Punisher some images used at the ending of the game in the Japanese version have been removed <laughs> were they too violent or something okay and then the flashing thing so okay very few changes uh pretty much just making it easier to play the secret characters and the photo sensitivity thing and then this thing for the Punisher okay so some more info from the website here so obviously online play with rollback uh casual ranked and custom like lobbies for your friends the punisher has online co-op and spectating drop in and out as you please it, you know it's cool that they're putting unique features into this game that is anyone actually gonna play this no offense but like aren't is, isn't it just gonna be fighting game players buying this collection it also has high score challenge which you know seems to only be something for the punisher game they don't mention high score challenge existing for the fighting games okay cross play between platforms is not supported just in case anyone was getting their hopes up but i think we could have seen that coming training mode we got input display hitboxes damage numbers again no frame data unfortunate but it is what it is and to be honest people don't really know frame data for the versus games like that it, for the most part like people know that magneto has a one frame crouching light but for the most part like people don't really pay attention to frames in this the way they do street fighter just because it's such a more crazy and fast game and again we have record playback we have the ability to turn on advancing guard including random advancing guard that's actually pretty useful 
for like practicing setups and stuff. Okay, marquee card. You know, I, I, I guess we're excited about this, even though we could probably just Google this. But, you know, it's still cool. I'm glad. It's, I would rather have it in the game than not be in the game. Quality of life features. So, again, the stuff that we see in, like, every port. Yeah, you could have, like, scan line filters. You can put borders around the edge. Pause and unpause. Single player retry difficult fights. Earn rewards and challenges. This is all exactly like the other Capcom fighting collection. And that's about it. I mean, this is another kind of sneaky, exciting thing here. Format digital physical. Now we're talking. I'm sure PC will not have a physical version because it seems to be Steam only. Uh, but Switch, theoretically, and maybe even PS4 will have a physical version. That would be pretty good because if you guys don't know, I would honestly say the big reason why a collection like this needs to exist and why you're seeing so many people excited about this, if you don't know, is because there was really like no good way to play this game. Uh, the game preservation for Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was basically non-existent, right? So uh, they had the PS3 and 360 version that was delisted from the app stores. They had the Marvel vs. Capcom 1 collection as well that came out at some point. That's been delisted. So uh, yeah, basically the only legal way to play this game, if you didn't already own it, was to like buy a used Dreamcast copy, which now costs like hundreds of dollars. So there was no legal way to play it. And emulation for this game was very imperfect. So uh, assuming that the game runs the way that it should and that the online is up to snuff, uh, this collection should be really exciting. So let me know what you guys think. Which games in the collection are you guys excited to play? Any Punisher fans out there? <laughs> Any anyone out there hype for the <laughs> hype for the Punisher? Uh, or are you hyped for some of the other games like uh, Marvel superheroes, X Men vs Street Fighter? That's a great great game. Uh, I know I've showed a lot of bias. Marvel vs Capcom One. I know it has a lot of fans out there. Uh, definitely some of the characters like Red Venom. A Gold War Machine are a little bit cheap in that game, but uh, yeah, still a very cool game. And obviously for me, the main event is going to be Marvel 2, just because it's been so hard to play. But uh, yeah, hopefully this collection ends up living up to our expectations. I, I, what I would really love is maybe like at EVO they'll give us the release date. Or maybe, you know, at EVO they'll be like, surprise, it's out now. How amazing would that be? But I'm not going to get my hopes up too much, you know, just before the end of the year. We'll be playing some Marvel, baby. Marvel has been freed. So shout-outs to Maximilian for leading the whole free Marvel movement and everything. And uh, shout-outs to you guys for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you're excited for the collection, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.